Hello everyone, Elliot Severn here with the Henry B. DuPont III Planetarium at the Discovery Museum, and we're going to continue our solar system tour today with the gas giants, and so we're going to set our course now for Jupiter. And here we are at Jupiter, the king of the solar system. It's a gas giant planet, entirely made of hydrogen and helium gas, and it actually has no solid surface. If Jupiter had been larger during its formation, it could have started the process of fusion and actually turned into a star, and we would have had a binary star system. However, it was small enough that it cooled off and formed this gas giant. It's by far the largest object in the solar system. It actually has over two and a half times as much mass as all the other planets combined. And we can see it has a thin ring system around it, as all the other gas giants do. Another interesting thing about Jupiter is not only is it the largest planet, it also spins very quickly. It rotates on its axis in less than 10 hours. Compare that with Earth, which is much smaller, and rotates every 24 hours. Now as Jupiter rotated, it exposed a feature that I want to show you. So its globe is covered in these stripes of cloud bands that blow around the planet. And right here is a well-known feature called the Great Red Spot. It is a cyclone on Jupiter, and it has been spinning ever since we first observed Jupiter through a telescope back in the 1600s. The Great Red Spot was discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1609 or 1610 when he started observing Jupiter through a telescope. And the Great Red Spot is so large that the entire planet Earth would fit inside it. And Jupiter has 79 known moons, which is more moons than any other planet in the solar system. It's almost like a mini solar system of its own. Four of its largest moons are called the Galilean moons, which were discovered by Galileo in the 1600s. And when he first observed Jupiter through a telescope, he saw four lights in a line surrounding the planet. And over time, he saw them changing positions, and he determined that they were moons orbiting around Jupiter. At the time, it was thought that Earth was at the center of the universe, and the Sun and all the planets orbited around the Earth. After observing Jupiter's moons, Galileo concluded that Earth was actually a planet orbiting around the Sun. And for publishing those ideas, he was actually arrested and put under house arrest for the rest of his life. Jupiter has been visited by many spacecraft, starting with flybys by Pioneer and Voyager, and has since had many orbiters exploring it, including the Galileo spacecraft, which orbited Jupiter and mapped its moons, and the more recent Juno spacecraft, which is orbiting very close to the planet's cloud tops. And the first of the Galilean moons we're going to visit is Io.
And here we are at Io. Io is the closest moon to Jupiter, and it's quite large for a moon. It's actually about the same size as Earth's moon. And we can see its very interesting colors, and that's because Io is a volcano world. It's orbiting closest to Jupiter, and Jupiter's immense gravity is exerting tidal forces on Io. And those tidal forces are causing internal heat and pressure, which lead to volcanoes. Every spacecraft that has flown by Io has seen eruptions shooting off of its surface. And here we can see plumes of lava spraying out into space out of one of Io's volcanoes. And when the Galileo spacecraft imaged its surface, it could see those volcanoes up close and could actually see lava in their calderas. Alright, and we're gonna head off to the next Galilean moon now, which is Europa. And here we are at Europa, which is Jupiter's ice moon. Its surface is mostly made of water ice, and it's a very large moon, almost as large as Earth's moon. It's covered in these stripe features, which are actually cracks in its icy surface caused by Jupiter's tidal forces. And what we have discovered is that under Europa's icy surface is a global ocean of liquid water. And we believe it may have more liquid water than all the oceans and lakes and rivers of Earth combined. And so it's possible that there might be life under the icy surface of Europa. It's definitely a place we're going to explore more in the future. And we're going to head off to the next Galilean moon, which is Ganymede. Here we are at Ganymede. It is a rocky moon of Jupiter. There's no ice here or volcanoes here. But it is larger than Io and Europa. It's actually larger than Earth's moon, one of the largest moons in the solar system. However, there's one larger moon in the Jupiter system, and that is Callisto, the final Galilean moon. Here we are at Callisto, and Callisto is actually the largest moon in the entire solar system, and we can see how large it is compared to Earth's moon. It is the outermost of the Galilean moons, and it's covered in impact craters. So now we're going to leave the Jupiter system and we're going to head off to explore Saturn and its moons.
And here we are at Saturn, which is the ring world of the solar system. It's also a gas giant. It's very similar to Jupiter in composition, but it's a bit smaller. And it's covered in these beautiful rings. And we're going to fly into the rings and take a look at what they look like up close. Alright, so we're going to start to fly in closer now. And we're going to actually enter the rings of Saturn. And when we get very close, we're going to be able to see that they're actually made up of little particles of ice. It's kind of like an orbiting snowstorm around Saturn. And every particle of ice is like a mini moon orbiting around it. Now we don't know exactly how its rings formed, and we think that a moon may have collided with another and broke apart to form these icy rings. Now we're going to take a look at one interesting moon that actually lives within its rings. And we're going to fly to the moon Pan. Now it's a very small moon which lives in the Enki division in Saturn's rings and it actually carves out this gap in between the rings. So here we are at Pan, and we can see it has an irregular shape. It's too small to be spherical, and it may have been a captured asteroid or comet or something like that. But it's so close to Saturn that it ended up carving out this channel in the rings, and we call this the Enki Division. Saturn has 62 known moons orbiting around it, and most of those moons were explored by the Cassini spacecraft. And here we are at the Cassini orbiter, which explored the moons of Saturn. It was launched in 1997 on a Titan IV rocket. It entered into orbit in 2004, and it remained in orbit until 2017 when it was deliberately destroyed in the atmosphere of Saturn. And so most of the images we're going to see of Saturn's moons were taken by the Cassini spacecraft. The first moon that we're going to visit is Enceladus. Here we are at Enceladus. It orbits very close to Saturn. And it's a very small moon. If you compare it to Earth, it's only about the size of England. And it's a very interesting world. It's an ice moon kind of similar to Europa, except there's one main difference. Enceladus and Europa each have an icy surface and liquid water underneath. However, something very special is happening on Enceladus. As Cassini flew by Enceladus, it saw plumes of water that were shooting out into space. And these are geysers on the surface of Enceladus. 
And so if we want to sample the water underneath Enceladus, we don't have to drill through the ice. It's shooting out into space. All we have to do is fly through it. And Cassini did just that. It flew through its icy plume, and it discovered organic compounds in that water. And so it's possible that there could be life underneath the surface of Enceladus. And in addition to that, we know that the ingredients for life are there. So definitely another moon which could support life in our solar system. Another moon extensively explored by Cassini is Titan. And here we are at Titan. It's the largest moon of Saturn, and it's actually the second largest moon in the solar system. It's a very interesting moon. It's actually the most Earth-like world in the solar system. It has a thick atmosphere, about three times as thick as Earth's, and its surface is covered in liquid lakes and oceans. However, out this far from the sun, it's hundreds of degrees below zero. And so, although it has lakes on its surface, it's not water lakes, it's lakes of liquid methane. And so Cassini mapped the surface and lakes of Titan, and it also dropped a probe into its atmosphere. The Huygens spacecraft was built by the European Space Agency. It had a heat shield and entered its atmosphere. It had a parachute and took images as it descended towards the surface of Titan. After it touched down on the surface of Titan, it sent back this image of the surface. And we can see rocks and boulders and even mud a scene very reminiscent of Earth. And so that concludes our tour of Jupiter and Saturn. Up next, we are going to travel to the icy giants in our outer solar system. Everyone have a great week and clear skies.